This ball is rocketed into the gap left center field. It's gone. Jerry Hairston Jr. Sliding in foul territory. Jerry Hairston. Hairston hits this one well to left field. It's got a chance. It's gone. Jerry Hairston. First of all, I mean, the biggest storyline, at least in my eyes, for the Dodgers is the, the lack of David Price for this season. I guess, yeah. how much do you think that's going to impact them and, and the rotation as a whole? Well, anytime you get you lose a caliber of player like a David Price is going to hurt your team. You know, fortunately, the Dodgers are very deep. Uh, they have uh, plenty of arms, uh, young arms especially, that are looking to take that next step. I, I look for a guy like Julio Urias uh, to really take advantage of this opportunity. He can very well uh, be that third starter. Ross Stripling is a former All-Star. Uh, mm -hmm. He really came uh, into his own when he was asked to start uh, for the Dodgers. Uh, he's kind of like a utility pitcher can play, excuse me, can pitch out of the bullpen, but he wants to start. He has the ability to start. So, and we got youngsters like Gonsling and, and May that can also help out a rotation. A guy like Alex Wood, uh, who was kind of banged up the last year or so, but now he's yeah. fully healthy and he knows how to pitch at Dodger Stadium. So I expect plenty of guys to come in and step up. Do you think there's going to be more of an emphasis now more than ever on starting pitching, especially with the 60 game season? Uh, I, I think power pitching can kind of help. You know, you know, we always talk about baseball being a marathon. Well, guess what? It's not a mar marathon. Sprint, this year. Yeah. So every game, because it's a sprint, every game is like a postseason game. Mm. So Dave Roberts and the managers uh, for the other 29 teams have to figure out a way, okay, how do we attack this season early? You know, do we run guys out like Clayton Kershaw or Walker Buehler? Do we extend, extend them to five, six, or seven innings? From jump, I don't think mm -hmm. that's going to be the case. So I think the bullpen is going to uh, have to play a major role, especially early on, because a lot of these starters aren't built up yet. So the bullpen, I think, is going to be key uh, to helping uh, ball clubs the first probably two to three, three weeks of the season. So I think you got to make sure you have a, a deep rotation, but also a yeah. deep bullpen. I know it's pitching always wins and loses your games, but especially when it's shortened like this, I mean – not only is every game, every game count, but every pitch counts. Um, yes. You, you kind of touched on it's a sprint a little bit. Uh, I know teams getting hot at the right time will kind of propel them into October in a regular 162 game season. What teams do you see this year kind of that might have a shot in just a 60 game spread as opposed to just a full season 162? I'm going to pick a, an American League team. I'm going to pick a national team. Now, we know teams like the, the Dodgers are going to be in it, yeah. the Yankees. Uh, the powerhouse teams are going to be in it. But there are two teams that are, aren't getting a whole lot of fanfare right now that kind of scare me a little bit. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays uh, mm -hmm. in the AL East, the very talented group. Cash has done a great job with yeah. that team. They know how to play together. They put the ball in play. Uh, they know how to mix and match their rotation. Uh, so they're kind of used to, you know, having a guy be that opener, yeah. uh, if you will. So I think they might be suited for that 60-game sprint. So I think they're going to be in the mix. And for a National League team, I'm looking at a team that may not have the pitching depth, but they got some young arms there that are finally healthy. And look at the Colorado Rockies. Anytime you have a team that has Blackman, you have Trevor Story, and that kid at third base, Nolan Arenado, he's not a kid, he's a man's man. <laughs> you have that type of firepower. You had a veteran like a Matt Kemp who's going to probably be their DH. If you have all that lineup getting hot, for a month, that means they're in it. So yeah. that type of team um, is, is a team that could really make a noise in a short season. So I'm looking at the Rockies and I'm looking at the, the Rays right now. Speaking of kind of the DH in the National League, are you, a, are you a purist? Are you against it or are you for it this year? I, I'm for it this year. Uh, I, would like to, I would like to see the National League keep uh, pitchers uh, hitting. Listen, I love seeing big league hitters pitch, but I also mm -hmm. like seeing guys like Rich Hill <laughs> at the plate. <laughs> Hunjin Ryu's moved on yeah. uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays, swing the bat, go apo taco. I think that's fun. But mm -hmm. also, it, it allows that old school type of game where you can kind of double switch, making sure as a manager, you not, you know, use your, your guys early in the game. There's so much thought process uh, that goes into managing a National League game. So, I'm going to miss it this year, but I think it's important to do it this year because you want to make sure guys are, are, 
are, are healthy and they're not going to uh, get hurt. You're not going to see a Clayton Kershaw because he hasn't been running a whole lot in cleats, you know, try to stretch a single and double and he ends up blowing mm-hmm. his hamstring and he's out for two months and that's the season. Yeah. So I'm glad that they're doing it for this year. Hopefully they'll go back next year. And for like the extra inning rule, you throw that too. I think it is this year they're starting with man on second, right? And for the 10th. Yeah, I've heard a lot of managers, uh, <laughs> especially David Martinez, and I'm, I'm on board with how he feels. Yeah. But I'm going to say this. If I'm Major League Baseball and you're looking to try certain things or maybe implement things, this is the year to do it. Because now mm-hmm. you get a chance to see if it works or not. And it's only 60 games, right? So if it doesn't work, you know, hey, we tried it. Nobody liked it. We're going to go back to the way it was. Uh, in the following years. But if you're going to try something, this is the year to do it because, you know, especially with the pandemic going on, you want to make sure guys are, are safe. You don't want to be out there 18, 19 innings in an extra inning game. You want to make yeah. sure the, end, the, the game ends pretty quickly and make sure guys are safe. I'm, I'm a little bit purist. I like the pitchers hitting, as you said. I like kind of the long games, but it does make sense being in the kind of the pandemic mode where I guess less exposure, less being around people, especially other teams where if you're on first base for – you're playing first base for 18, 19 innings, you're exposed to, you know, X amount of people, and that could, you know, True. be impacted. Um, kind of going off that with, with players opting out, are you understanding about that? And kind of if you were still playing, what would your thought process be as a player? Well, I'm all for uh, the decision, the choice of guys either opting out or deciding to play. Everybody – has different situations. Mm-hmm. Everybody has different family situations. You know, whether they may have their, their mother or their grandfather or grandfather living with them. You know, you got to understand that. Yeah. So every situation is different. So you can't judge anybody for opting out and you can't judge anybody for choosing to play. So I support both sides. Uh, if I was a player right now, I would opt to play. You know, I talk to my doctor all the time. He's a very knowledgeable guy. He's Uh, one of the foremost doctors in the world. And we talk all the time. He said, you know, maybe look at it this way. If you're a player, um, outside of maybe locking yourself in your home, when you do everyday things, whether go to the grocery store, you're going to go to the gym every once in a while because you like to stay in shape. You know, what other safer place to be is around your teammates, knowing they're getting tested just about every day. So everybody that you are coming into contact with on a daily basis is doing the steps necessary to keep everybody safe. So you can make the argument, one of the best places to be is with your team because you got access to the trainers, you got access to the Dodgers, and well, if you're the Dodgers, obviously the best (laughs) doctor, Sarah, but at any other club, you got access Mm -hmm. to the best stuff available and you're getting tested regularly. You know what I'm saying? So if something happens, you find out, hey, you can go, and make sure you quarantine yourself away from your family, away from your teammates. And if I was still playing, I would probably choose to play. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a, a tough scenario kind of just to be a player because I feel you're going to get you know, ripped apart either way. Yeah. Um, especially the social media nowadays. One person opts out. There's people on both sides kind of attacking you. Um, yeah. The Astros visiting the Dodgers, Dodger Stadium in late September. Are you, uh, do you think that's going to get a little ugly based on 2017? I don't think it's going to get ugly. You know, I think there's going to be things that you can forgive somebody, but you could also, um, if you're in the wrong, like the Astros obviously were in the wrong, mm-hmm. you just have to suffer the consequences. You know, the way they react and the way they will handle this, and this is not just with the Dodgers, they're going to have to face the Angels. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to face other teams that they came into contact with that they used and implemented this cheating program. That's what it really was to help benefit their team. Yeah. They're going to have to suffer those, uh, those consequences. Now, how they react to it, you get hit, you take it, take your base. Don't say a word. Another guy gets hit, take it, take their base. Don't say a word. Then I really believe after a couple of times, things will die down. But if they try to retaliate, They will keep the cycle going. And it's not just the Dodgers, I say. It's every team they're going to have to deal with. And if they kind of take their punishment this year, then it'll be squashed. And next year, 
clean slate. I noticed the uh, Yankee jersey behind you. You did have uh, one shortened season there. And as a New Yorker um, and a Yankees fan, thank you for helping bring a, bring a title back to New York. And thank you personally. I doubt you remember this, but uh, game four in Philly in 09. I think okay. 13, 14 year old me was uh, down by the right field foul pole. Yeah, I think you singled me out of the crowd. I actually tossed me a ball. So get out. Yeah, swear to God, it's I got it. Uh, I got it in my folks' home. My thing. I got it all scribbled up. It was just like a standard MLB ball. So that's something I always cherish. I think you guys got a win that night, and then you took it home a couple of days later. So on a personal note, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. You're yeah. Welcome. I don't that was, that was a that was a great team, and I, I had so much fun on that team. I, so talented, but we all played together. It didn't matter if you, you're a superstar like A-Rod or Derek Jeter or Mo, mm -hmm. or if you're that bottom of the totem pole, rookie, or the 25th man. Everybody was together. And we knew it'll take everybody to win a championship. And that was one of the greatest experiences to me, to see superstars going the other way, making sure they move guys over. Because nobody, even though there was big egos there, when it came between the lines, there was no egos. It was all about winning, and that was one of the most uh, fun I've ever had on, on a baseball team, on a baseball field, in the clubhouse. Uh, funny guys on that team, man. Uh, we really had a good time, and I'm so glad we were able to, to win it that year. Yeah, it was um, kind of for me. I was in the younger years, early 2000s, when the, the dynasty was a thing, so that was really the first kind of championship cycle that I was able to live through. So it was very exciting to kind of go through that um, with my father, with my friends, kind of. Very cool as a fan's perspective, but as a player, I can only imagine, especially, as you said, with some of those egos on the team and some of the, the players kind of bring a championship to end. Um, but, yeah, I just don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, now you got to run. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out, talking with me for a little bit, and I uh, hope you're able to, to stay safe among um, what's going on. Anytime. Appreciate you having me, and also stay safe.